we, we have uh, a slightly involved application left to do uh, about power plant choice, uh, which takes into account, it, the actual problem is more complicated than what we, we got the tools to do today, but it'll illustrate a few of the things that, that we, uh, we did, in particular simultaneous equations and also use of the exponential function. Um, and um, that should take us about 20 minutes, and then we will be done. Um, I will not, I debated whether to start you on calculus tonight, but I think that it's the first evening. Uh, some people say, are saying no, and um, so maybe we'll start on calculus as planned on, on Thursday. But we'll, we'll do this. This is actually not as, as complicated as it sounds. And, and it's very, I like this example because it is very much about, it is very much a problem that uh, uh, often people in this field have to deal with. Okay, now, um, so this is a very common problem. Okay, and I've simplified it heavily here. Um, you have to choose between a, a coal power plant or a gas turbine. Okay? The general, the main characteristic difference between the two is that a coal plant requires much more capital investment. Uh, a gas turbine is very quick to put up and um, it doesn't it, it doesn't require um, uh, any catal catalysts to try to reduce the sulfur emissions. Um, you know, it's not so dirty. It's, uh, the plants are quite modular. So capital cost for a gas turbine is much lower per megawatt of capacity. Um, on the other hand, a coal plant has much lower operating costs, much lower costs uh, per hour of running and per uh, kilowatt hour produced. Okay, so which should you use? Well, the answer is not obvious. If you are going to use it very little, then you don't care so much about the operating cost, that is the variable cost, so you're probably going to go with which technology? Gas. The gas turbine, right? If you're going to use it a lot, if you're going to use it all the time, then you're going to care about the operating cost, the variable cost, so you, you're probably going to go with the coal plant. Okay? The exact same problem comes up with um, you know, fuel efficient cars versus um, uh, gas guzzlers, right? If you if you drive, um, if you drive long distances to commute, it pays to have a highly efficient car. But if all you use your car for is um, the summer weekend jaunt to the Berkshires or something, um, then you know you might get a '67 Mustang. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, sorry, say that again. Uh, oh, yeah, so that's a very good question. Um, they are not in, in these variable costs, obviously. So um, um, if permits were required, um, which they are in Europe but not in the US, uh, then the operating costs of the coal plant would be... Um, higher and the operating costs of the gas turbine would look relatively cheaper. Uh, or, or nuclear, for in example, would look even cheaper. And okay. The I'm sorry? Permits and for the cost. No. No, they would be variable costs because they would be associated with the total amount of, with the emissions generated based on usage. Okay, 
Um, but there are also ways to tr convert uh, variable costs into fixed costs based on expected usage and so on. And we spent some time talking about that in my class, uh, in the economics class, and, and also in Professor McElmurray's class. Uh, um, sorry, not in Professor McElmurray's class, but in the... Um, he does talk about it too. Oh, okay, okay. So he talks about it too, and also uh, Professor Bloomgarden has a, uh, has a class on uh, carbon markets in particular. Okay, um, now, uh, okay, so this, suppose that the overnight cost of building the coal power plant and the gas turbine are given below. So what's the overnight cost? Anybody here with a background in energy? Um, okay, overnight cost is uh, the cost is the present value of building of the present value of all the construction costs as they're incurred over the construction period if you had to make the plant come up overnight how much money would you have to spend see a gas turbine takes three months to put up a coal plant takes a year so if I was simply to add up all the construction costs that I spend over the course of a year and compare it to all the added construction costs spent over the course of three months, then I would be comparing apples to oranges, especially if interest rates were significant. Right now, of course, interest rates are very low, but the appropriate interest rate, it turns out, for this sort of problem is not so much the risk-free rate, which right now is very low, but a risky rate, which is generally significantly higher. And for these kinds of problems, for these kinds of investments, uh, is substantial. So, um, so the overnight cost, I think I gave you the definition here, cost of the construction project, if no interest was incurred during construction, and as if the project was completed overnight. Of course, that's not reality, so what, to compute overnight costs, you take the present value of uh, all cash flows during construction. It allows you to compare uh, construction costs across technologies which have very different um, time horizon, construction periods. Okay, so here, here are the overnight costs, and those costs are expressed per kilowatt of capacity. Okay, so this is capacity, not electricity flow. Okay, so this means that if you, if you built uh, a megawatt power plant, that would be a very small power plant, right? Then you would uh, spend a million dollars, a million and fifty thousand to build that, okay? Uh, and you would spend 350,000 to build the gas turbine. Okay, now, so overnight cost, you can think of as the instantaneous capital investment. Now, what I'd like to do is to convert that overnight cost into units which are the same as the variable cost, okay? The overnight cost is what I pay to put a power plant up overnight. Now that power plant has a useful life, so it's going to provide me with electricity over its useful life, and the value of that electricity is going to depend on the interest rate as well as other factors which I've simplified out of this analysis. Um, variable cost, on the other hand, is the cost that I spend to generate one kilowatt hour of electricity at a point in time. So variable cost is usually expressed in dollars per kilowatt hour or dollars per kilowatt year. Okay, so 
dollars per kilowatt generated in a unit of time. Okay, so I've got to convert my overnight cost, which is just dollars per kilowatt, into the same units as variable cost. Okay, so the way to do that, just think about it conceptually, overnight cost is like paying an upfront purchase price for your home and variable cost is like the rent that you save by owning your home. Okay, so the overnight cost is a stock and um, the variable cost is a flow. Okay, so th this is a distinction you want to keep in mind. Yes. The, uh, yeah, so, so in order to do that translation, I've given you a formula here. And so I want to just talk a little bit about this formula. Okay? That's fixed cost expressed in dollars per kilowatt year. And how do I get that? Um, in the numerator, I have an, a rate of return that I could have earned on my investment. Remember, the overnight cost is like my investment, the purchase price for my home. The interest rate or the discount rate times that overnight cost gives me an, uh, an approximate annual flow of benefits that I receive from that investment. Okay, so if instead of buying my house, I had put it in the, in the stock market, maybe not, that's a bad example, if I had put it in treasury bonds or something, uh, then uh, I would have earned some return. And that this quantity is going to be related, not exactly the same because interest rates change and so on, but um, will be related orders of magnitude to that annual benefit. Okay. And that's, yes, that's like my annual opportunity cost, exactly. Right? Now, below here, I have a quantity which tries to discount this um, in such a way that it, uh, that it takes into account that I'll receive R times OC in the first year and then R times OC in the second year. But when I receive R times OC in the second year, it will not be worth as much to me as receiving it in the first year. Um, generally built into this is the notion that dollars in future are worth less to me today than dollars today, okay? And dollars further out into the future are worth even less than dollars less further out. Okay? Um, when you, so uh, what you could in effect do is you could take R times OC. Uh, let me uh, actually give you a sense of where this formula comes from. You could take R times OC, this is what I get in the first year, as saved rent or as the return on my investment, plus R times OC in the second year, but discounted back by something. It turns out that what you would discount it by is one plus R. Okay, so if the interest rate is 10%, you divide this by 1.1 to get its value today. Of course, if, if you've seen present value calculations, this will be familiar to you. And in the next year, you would do that divided by one plus R squared, and so on. Okay, and you'd have a series 
for a power plant with a finite useful life, you'd have a finite number of terms here. Okay? You, you might, uh, for other things, you might have an infinite number of terms. Okay? But it turns out, and uh, I'll show you this in some other class, it turns out that this ends up being approximately equal to that. That is, this whole sum ends up being approximately equal to that. Okay, this is, and if you remember uh, um, summing infinite series in college or in high school, um, then you'll, you'll recall the, the, the shape of this formula anyway, right? Okay, don't worry if that was meaningless. Okay, um, <laughs> uh, just that last part, not the whole two hours. <laughs> um, okay, um, okay, so, 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 okay, so all I did was I, I summed these values um, to get me the fixed cost, but converted into annual units, okay? So when I do that, um, uh, so for the coal plant, I can take 1050. So I put in 1050 here, and I do an example here where um, the interest rate is 10%. Generally in these formulas, the interest rate is always entered as a decimal between 0 and 1. So 10% will be 0.1. Okay, if you put in the number 10, you'll get uh, results that don't make sense. So that's, that's a good way to remember whether you did it right or not. And uh, T here is 40 for the coal plant and 20, this is in years, for the gas. Okay, so when you plug uh, T equals 40 and R equals 0.1, and the 1050 into this formula, then you get the fixed costs for the coal plant as $107 per kilowatt year, okay? So that means that to produce one kilowatt consistently over the course of the year, so to produce one kilowatt every minute for however many minutes there are in the year, you would need to spend in fixed cost $107. And in effect, you'd need to spend $107 on average every year in present value terms for 40 years. So what that does is it translates your initial investment of 1,050 into a levelized fixed cost, an annual levelized fixed cost. If you read um, analyses of wind power versus nuclear power, you'll see the term levelized cost come up often. Okay, so this is what levelized cost is. You're taking uh, an expenditure that occurs in a short period of time, like the purchase price or the investment cost, and you know that its benefits will be uh, uh, received over a long period of time, but it will not be received in equal amounts every year. You levelize it to uh, say what the average level would be if you were to receive the benefits equally every year. Okay, so that's the levelized cost, fixed cost for the coal plant, and that's that for the gas turbine. Okay, now suppose I give you the variable costs, and these are, these are numbers from some EIA report. Um, and um, that is, um, that's $87 per kilowatt year. Okay, that's that's about $10 per kilowatt hour, okay? There are 8,760 hours in the year, okay? Um, you can see that the gas 
turbine has a much higher variable cost than the coal plant. Okay, not excluding the cost of permits, not including the cost of the permits. Um, okay, so uh, now, yes. Yes, yes, of course, yes, sorry. I skipped a step. Okay, so that's the equation, right? Fc is equal to R OC over 1 minus E to the minus RT. Okay, so for the coal plant, for the coal plant, T is equal to 40, and R is equal to 0.1. So um, Fc for the coal plant is 0.1 times the overnight cost, which was 1050. over 1 minus E. Remember, E is a constant approximately equal to 2.71 raised to the power minus RT. So that's going to be 0.1 times 40. OK? So you will need. Uh, You'll need a calculator that has E in it. Um, and when you calculate this out, you should get 106.96. OK? Or you can do it in Excel. OK. OK. And uh, this. I just gave you, okay? This was not computed, okay? Now, but what's, but why, why, why is this? So uh, now that you've gotten to the stage, you can do some simultaneous equations, okay? Linear simultaneous equations. Because I had said that, um, I had said that the choice of generating technology depends on how much, how frequently you expect to use the technology, right? And our intuition was that if I'm going to run the plant 100% of the time, chances are I'm going to pick the coal plant with the lower variable cost, right? Um, so you want to know in answering which plant to choose, your answer surely has to depend on how frequently you're going to use it, right? So um, all of this, all of this is in terms of kilowatts per year, okay? So I can define a variable which is commonly used in electricity economics called the capacity factor, which is the percentage of time that the plant is going to be up and running. Okay? And generally, plants are not up and running 100% of the time. They have maintenance schedules. Uh, they may be producing sorry, uh, electricity uh, at a time. Uh, they, 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 they may be shut down when electricity is not necessary, in the middle of the night, in winter, uh, and so on. Right. Um, so, uh, and it turns out that coal plants tend to run around 75% of the time, and gas turbines tend to run around 20% of the time, okay? And you'll see that the reason for that is, of course, related to the variable and fixed cost. Okay, so what we're going to do is, okay, so if the, if, so let's go through this intuition here for a second. If the power plant is run 100% of the time, then how much revenue do you need to break even? 
or what will be your total cost of operation. It's going to be your fixed cost plus your variable cost because this is your fixed cost for all kilowatts produced in the year. So variable cost for all kilowatts produced in the year for 8,760 hours. So if you were running 100% of the time, you could simply take for the coal plant 106.96 plus 8760, and you'd get a number something like 195 per kilowatt. And that's how much your total cost would be. And you'd take 40 plus 306, if you're running a gas turbine all the time, and you'd get a number like 346. And that'd be your total cost of operation in the gas plant, right? So obviously, if you were running it 100% of the time, 190 is less than 346. So you'd go with the coal plant. But uh, generating plants are designed for various type, various demand profiles. For example, a gas plant is much faster to turn on and turn off, right? So you use a gas plant part of the time you use it generally to satisfy peak demand between 1 p.m. and 7 p.m. in the summertime when everybody runs their air conditioning. Okay, so that's why gas plants run 20% of the time, but so, uh, so we, we want to know which is the cheaper technology for a particular given capacity factor. So let's define the variable CF as the capacity factor, and we define it as the proportion of time the plant is run. So it's going to be a number between 0 and 1. Okay? And then I know that then I can draw a linear function. I can draw a linear equation that tells me the annual revenue requirement or the break-even revenue as a function of the capacity factor. For the coal plant, that's going to be equal to the fixed cost to run the plant for a whole year, regardless of how much I run it, plus the variable cost times the capacity factor. If that's equal to 1, that means that I'm running it 100% of the time. But if it's less than 1, if it's 0.1, then I'll only incur 10% of this. OK? And, so, and similarly for the gas turbine. Fixed cost plus the variable cost times the capacity factor. If the capacity factor is equal to 1, then I simply get 306 plus 40. OK. Well, these are just uh, linear equations, like the ones you've seen, right? This is y equals b plus mx. Cf is equal to x. These equations are called screening curves. You, are, you probably may even have come across screening curves if you um, have heard discussions about uh, wind power versus nuclear and so on. Okay, so the question is at what capacity factor is the gas turbine the cheaper choice? Okay, well, I, I have screening curves for the gas turbine and the coal plant. And um, here I can put the capacity factor on the x-axis. And this, uh, I could put, the, uh, here I would call this the break-even revenue, or it's also known as the annual revenue requirement, ARR. And so for the coal plant, I would start off at 106.96. And uh, 
and I'm going to rise. Uh, and is my rise going to be steep or shallow? Relative to the gas turbine. Shallow, right? It has a lower slope than the gas turbine. The gas turbine starts out at $40.48, but it has a quite steep ascent. Okay, so that will, go like, will look like this. So this is the gas turbine, and this is the coal plant. Okay, so you can see, uh, and this is really only defined for a capacity factor up to one, right? So from zero to one. You can see that at a capacity factor of one, it should be the case that the gas turbine is more expensive, that is its break-even revenue or its total cost is higher than the coal plant. Okay, so when you plot those two equations out, this is what it looks like. These are the screening curves. Okay, the gas turbine is green because it's supposedly marginally cleaner than the coal plant. Okay? Okay, yes. Right. So, for example, if, if let's say we had um, some version of Waxman Markey pass, and there is a cost associated with emitting, so you can translate the price. If, if you give me the carbon market price, if it trades or if there's a tax, it's a, an actual uh, statutory number. Let's say that tax is. $20 per ton of carbon. Well, for the coal plant, I know how many kilowatts are generated whose byproduct is one ton of carbon, right? So $20 is going to have to be translated into a per kilowatt cost. And let's say that that per kilowatt cost is $10 then I would add to this slope, I would add that $10, uh, so up here. So instead of 87.60, it would be 97.60. So the slope would become steeper. Okay, so policy would have the impact of making this line steeper. It wouldn't change the intercept. It would make it steeper. And it's possible, it's possible, uh, not so much with gas turbines, but if you had nuclear or solar, solar is not really uh, industrial scale, maybe wind, uh, it's possible that it might bring the, the slope down because uh, of the way that those permits are issued in advance, usually for zero cost, so it's like a subsidy that's provided to the power generators. And so in theory, uh, the, the, um, the nuclear power producers, who obviously are backing this, would get a huge windfall. And the potential benefits that they get from it should be amortized over each megawatt they produce. So the nuclear power plants um, uh, slope would be brought down by a permit price. So it would, it would look more competitive. The problem with nuclear is it doesn't look like this. The nuclear starts up here, because it has a very high fixed cost, and then it's relatively flat. So actually, with what happens with nuclear is if you add a carbon price, since they get paid for not generating the carbon, nuclear looks like this, Okay, which is the reason that the nuclear power companies were major supporters of, of um, that process. You know. Sorry? Cap and trade or the tax, either one. Yes.
Right. So, so let's. Yeah. So let, I think I, I, I was I, I was a little quick in explaining that. This graph is drawn for the capacity factor as a variable. If this is saying that if the capacity factor was a hundred percent, then CF would be equal to one. So this is how much the, the the coal plant would cost, and this is how much the gas turbine would cost. So, because coal plants are ge well, because um, so in demand situations where you see demand is quite varied. If you look at the peak to trough electricity demand, it's for a city is in, in the orders of magnitude of 10 to 15 times, okay? So, what, uh, so that, what that means is the capacity factor, if you were building power plants to meet 100% of peak capacity, there'd be times when you were only running a 10% capacity, right? So you can't have the same technology to meet that entire profile of demand. So you, because of the fixed and variable costs here, if you think that your power plant is gonna run 70% of the time, you should pick a coal plant. If you think it's gonna run only 20% of the time, you should pick um, the gas turbine. So that's telling you? Yes, so suppose for example that you, you, why do you need to build a new plant? Presumably there's some shortage of, of generated electricity. Now, you have to determine what the size of your new plant is going to be relative to your shortage. Now, what is that shortage? That shortage is not one number. Clearly, it is very high at peak periods and low at off-peak periods. Okay, so there's a range of demand that you need to meet. Now, if, you're, if you are able to meet that peak shortfall um, with this new plant that you're going to build, then you know that it's going to run at the peak period, but it's probably not going to run at the off-peak period. So that means this is a plant that you're going to put on, but it's not going to run 70% of the time. It's only going to run 20% of the time. So you would want to make a gas turbine. But if, on the other hand, you have, you know, so that's, that would be a situation like uh, building a peak plant in Long Island City to meet summertime demand. But let's say that you're in India, where um, routinely there is load shedding, uh, then your power shortage is not, uh, I mean, certainly you have a power shortage at peak periods, but you probably even have a power shortage at base load. So the new plant that you bring online is going to run 70% of the time. Mm -hmm. It's got to feed power both at off-peak and peak periods. So then you're going to build a coal plant. So, you know, um, uh, that's, this is ba basically a method of choosing the cheapest uh, way, uh, the cheapest generating technology, not taking into account externalities. If the prices exist for the externalities, you would, you would be able to take, it account, take account of it in this framework. Okay. So, so you could, so this is of course just a system of two linear equations. And just like those simple uh, linear equations you saw before, there is a point where they intersect. So you know, and that point happens to be point 0.304. Um, so you know that if your capacity factor is less than that, you're gonna go with gas. If it's more than that, you're gonna go with coal. And in reality, you'd have many different screening curves for every different technology, and you'll see that they intersect in different places, okay? And part of policy is how do these things move around 
when you put in a permit price or when you change the interest rate, um, which will have a huge impact on this too. Yes? The life of the old man was 40 years. Yes. That's factored in already. So uh, you see, that's, that's exactly what you were doing. So that's a very good question. That's what you were doing when you made this calculation. You were taking the levelized annual fixed cost. So you are saying, yes, it's a, this gas turbine only lives for 20 years, but I've converted that into an annual cost so that the variable and fixed costs are, are in the same units. Okay, so these, these costs are per year costs. Okay, that's it. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow at orientation. <laughs>